Hey everyone, fellow composer Mike Phillips here with Museotech. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the brand new Scene Editor app that allows you to easily program your fader units from Museotech. So <clears throat> there's already an onboard editor on every one of my units, and you can get to it pretty easily. Very easy and straightforward to use. If you notice on the app, I tried to mirror or mimic the look so you'd be right at home. Okay, so let's see how it works. I'm gonna start here by clicking on Refresh Ports. And you can see the fader says, hey, I'm connected. And you get a little flashing green dot. And that's because the app needs to be aware of the fader and the fader needs to be aware of the app. They need to talk to each other. So if one gets disconnected, like if I turn this off, for example, then the app is gonna squawk. And that's just good practice because, you know, you wanna make sure that the app is still working, the fader's still uh, connected together with the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the unit again so we can see what's going on here. And we'll go ahead and refresh our ports as soon as it comes back up. All right, so here it is again. We're all connected up and now we can edit everything. So I'm gonna hit the tab key on the keyboard. I know you can't see my hands, but I'm hitting tab and that just moves amongst the field or shift tab moves backwards. Um, you can also click and just highlight something if you want to. If you put in a character that's not allowed, it will squawk at you um, as you would hope it would. So I'm just gonna do a little light editing here. And we'll go ahead and put in some names here. So mod, breath, um, expression, we'll put in sustain. So, you know, as long as you can click and type, you can edit really easy. You can edit the scene names as well, of course. And a cool thing here is you can actually add some special characters. So if I wanted to put special characters, these will go on to the very ends of the names only. Let's just rename this one here. We'll call this one Spitfire. Spitfire Brass. Ooh, didn't mean all caps there. Always seems finicky, these caps lock keys. <laughs> it's like sometimes you have to hit them a couple times, but the lightest little brush on them will turn them on when you don't want them. Okay, and then these represent the range high values. So if you do have a, a loud brass library here, for example, um, and you would like to top out at, let's say, 110. So I could literally just change that to a lower value if the brass library is too loud, which makes it really cool. Uh, we can also change the color on the unit as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on... Oh, right now it's on the global, sorry. And so if I wanted to, I could change this to a theme just for this particular scene. So let's make it a dramatic color change. I'm gonna go into the uh, Emerald City's all green, just for fun. Okay, so I've made a whole bunch of changes right here, and now I wanna get these changes to the fader. And this little button uploads just the current scene right here. This one uploads absolutely everything, any changes you've made to any scene anywhere. This one copies scenes, I'll show you that one. This one downloads a single scene from your fader. This one downloads everything, basically wipes out all the data in the app. Okay, so I'm just gonna upload this one, the Spitfire Brass that you just saw me make here. And I'll click Upload Scene and hit Yes. You can see the scene is received on the app. The color changes because now we're using that green color theme. And if I terminate the activity, we'll see all the changes that we just made. So you can see it's incredibly easy to use the app. And by the way, the app will squawk if you just terminate. If you click on that button, it terminates the uh, programming. Also clicking on the rear left uh, function button will do it if you don't have the throw buttons. Some people don't have these buttons. Um, so you can use a rear one instead. The little green triangle cutouts there, that's there to let you know that there's a fader range limitation. So again, very easy to use. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK and reconnect. Now I'm gonna show you another way of editing the data. So these are actually all buttons right here. And if I were to either press the Enter key on the keyboard or click, 
This takes us into a fader interactive mode where, in fact, I'll do, the, I'll do this right, one right here. Um, you can just drag the faders to change the values. So, you know, kind of fun, right? I think music equipment should be fun and functional. And that's what I was going for. Hitting the Enter key on the keyboard or Shift Enter will move you um, forward or backwards as well. And even with the names, I've given you a selection of common names to use. Click on the MIDI one here. And let's go with MIDI 2. And see, I'm just dragging the various faders, so it makes it really intuitive. Fader high range, we could edit that if we wanted to, to whatever. And then if you click again, it takes you out of the fader interactive mode, or if you just wait like five seconds or something, I don't remember what the time frame is, but then it'll come back out. So that's another really easy way of editing. Either press the enter key on the keyboard or click on one of these. Oh, I didn't even show you this one, sorry. This one will actually allow you to drag the first fader and you can change to any of the scenes that way as well. So that's just another neat way of navigating if you like. And again, you don't have to click your mouse there. You could just press the enter key on the keyboard, which I've just done, and then just drag the first fader to move. So just a fun way of getting around. Now there's something really exciting to show you guys, and that is fader presets. So I've set it up so that you can save all of the changes you've made into what, what I call a fader preset. And right now all you see is fader data. So I'm gonna start over with this. I'm gonna download everything again from the fader and see how it says fader data. This preset means this represents all the data exactly as the fader has it. Um, the moment you make the tiniest change, see how it gives you the little asterisk and the asterisk there to let you know that you made a change somewhere, either, either to the current scene or to another scene. In this case, it's there to tell us that uh, we made a change here. And so if you do make a bunch of changes, you, you can save them as a separate preset. Let's just call this one uh, test scene. And then you can click on the save preset. You can never save over the fader data one because that comes from the fader. But if you hit save or save as, um, either one of those will trigger to create a new uh, preset from this. So I'm gonna click there and I'm gonna call this one test preset and hit okay. So now you've got the original fader data preset and then you also have this new test preset. And you can get back to exactly what the fader has just by clicking on fader data or as you saw me do, I could re-download everything but this is just kind of a cool, quick way. And again, if I make the slightest change, if I'm on this preset, you can see now the asterisk there is there to let you know. In that case, I can just save over that. So if I hit that, it's gonna update the preset. Or if I wanted to actually make a new preset, save preset as. So I'll call it uh, cool as an example. So you can make as many presets as you want, which means you can expand your fader pretty much infinitely. So if your fader has eight scenes, well, the Fader Premiums and the Fader Pros have eight. Um, well, you can now have as many sets of eight scenes as you want. You could have a hundred sets of eight scenes. Um, so no matter how many scenes your actual Fader has, this will allow you to expand it pretty much infinitely. And that's really, really cool. Another thing that I did for you guys is I set it up so that these are um, CSV files. You can edit them directly and I'll show you that here in just a second. So I know a lot of people like a big and bold, simple you know, app, which is what I hope I've accomplished here, but there's gonna be some power users who, who might tell me, well, I just wanna get in and I wanna see all the scenes, I wanna see all the data, I just wanna change it all at once. Now, if you fall into that category, you can absolutely edit all the data here just by going to the presets folder. And so if we go into options, all the presets are, are stored in a folder and you can pick what that folder is, by the way. By default, it's just gonna be in the same folder as the app that you are using. But you can relocate that anywhere you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to that preset folder. Let me get out of here. Um, as I said, for you guys, it's just gonna be the preset folder that comes with 
uh, this, this, it's in the same folder as your, your app. So here's that one that was called cool, but I wanna make sure I'm on exactly the right one. You guys won't need to do it this way, so don't pay attention to this. Um, so anyway, here's the presets folder, and you can edit the presets directly. So I'm gonna edit this cool preset. I'm gonna open it with Excel. And you can see there it all is. I'm gonna change this test scene to cool scene, because this is the cool preset that we called it here. And I'm gonna change the CC numbers to 99, 100, 101, 102. Now, if you put wrong data in that it won't accept, it will give you an error. So um, don't worry too much about you know screwing things up because if you put data that's not allowed, like if you put text in there, it's in, in a CC number, you just won't be able to load the, uh, the preset. So I won't demo that to you, but you can see really easy. So for power users, hey, isn't that neat? You can edit everything all at once. And these funky characters, by the way, if I zoom in, I know these look really weird. Those are the, the special little characters like the hearts and the, the stars and um, music notes. So that's not gonna be so easy to edit here. I suggest just use the standard you know, names. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and save it. Just keep in mind, it says cool scene, 9900, 101, 102. Those are the changes I made and I'm gonna save it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and relaunch the app here. And let's go to our cool scene. And there's cool, and we need to go to our first scene. There it is. So you can actually edit all of these presets on your hard drive as CSV files. So really, really cool for you power users. So I wanted to make that available to you guys. Some of you won't care about it, and that's fine. Um, you can just easily save your presets right here. Um, another notable feature for you guys is if you go to this backup and restore, you can back up everything of your entire fader and then restore it later. So whatever you've uploaded to the fader, it's not gonna do anything uh, with the data here. This backup and restore backs up the data that's already on the fader. So if you made a bunch of changes here, and you wanted that to be part of the backup, you would need to first upload everything. So I'm gonna click Upload All, for example, and now I've just actually updated the entire fader. In fact, remember Cool Scene? Let me terminate, terminate the programming here. You can see, um, well, we have to go to the same scene here. So let's, let's get there. Um, another way to navigate your scenes is to hold the back button and to just drag the first fader. So I'm having a little trouble with one hand, sorry. Um, anyway, there you go, cool scene. And you can also change scenes just with these buttons right here. I could have also just clicked and hold and clicking and holding will move you. I should have done that, it would have been faster, huh? Okay, so anyway, here's all the data and I'm gonna back up absolutely everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh to reconnect our fader here and I'll back up and restore. So we'll hit backup. And you do need to set um, basically a backup name. I'm just gonna save it onto my desktop. I'm gonna call it BU for backup. And it's just a big old text file. And then I'm gonna go ahead and restore all that data. Actually, before I restore it, no, I'll just restore it. All right, so select a file, and then we just come in and there's the backup uh, file. So I'll go ahead and open that. And you can see the fader says, okay, all the data is received. But just as a fail safe, it is not going to actually overwrite anything on your fader until you tell it. <laughs> so um, you can see the, the app actually tells you refresh the device list and reconnect because if you go through with this, then everything is wiped out. And that's not to scare you, but it's just an extra level of protection for you in case I don't know, you did it by accident or something. So restore device using backup file, click to continue. So you click the back button and then that also was another safety feature. <laughs> uh, the second is to just drag the first fader and then it's gonna restore absolutely everything. So again, I just tried to anticipate all the main things that you guys would probably want and need 
um, in an app. I'm sure there's other things you can think of. So if you want to share with me, I'll, I'll be glad to hear and consider your ideas. Um, but I tried to make it as user friendly and simple as possible. And I know it's a bit sort of Disney looking with really large font and colors and stuff, but that's sort of my personality. Um, I like big and bold. I don't want to have to put on my glasses to do things. Um, and I like music equipment that looks good. So there's some really cool music equipment out there from some, some manufacturers. And I don't know, when you go to edit stuff, it just seems like you need a degree in computer science or engineering or something. And I hate that. I'm really more of the more of the right brain kind of guy. So that's what I'm gearing all this toward with a view towards keeping left brain features. Like I showed you, you can edit all those names. Um, and, and there's more to the app, but this is just kind of an overview of some of the main features. So anyway, gang, I really appreciate all of your time. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful rest of the day and um, hit me up with any thoughts or suggestions you may have for the app to make it even better or anything else you want to share. I'd love to hear from you. Have a beautiful day, everybody. Thank you so much for watching.